thank you very much. Uh, thank you, um, Madam Moderator Alemani. Uh, thank you to the co-organizers uh, of this meeting. Uh, we were we had a phone call one and a half years ago from the Catam Foundation and said, "Do you want to do this with us?" And I said, "Yes, of course." And then all of a sudden, the, the event is here, and it's great to see so many people here, both as speakers and and in the audience. Uh, I think it's it's great. We also had a, a conference here together with uh, with uh, with Katem uh, one and a half years ago on the situation in Cuba, and I know that there is very strong links uh, between the the, the the Catalan liberals and uh, the the pro democracy uh, movement in Cuba, and we we are, we work a lot on on Cuba, and we appreciate that. Uh, very much. Uh, I'm, I'm here to talk about the, 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 the title of the session is Best Practices. I'm going to talk actually honestly and telling the truth as uh, Antoni required. Uh, I'm going to talk about the best practices and some of the worst practices uh, that we have done uh, over the years. Uh, about my institute is, is affiliated with uh, the Swedish Liberal Party. This, uh, what you see on the screen, is an election poster from 1938 that says, away with all tendencies for dictatorship. Uh, in Liberal parties, the, the, the focus and the belief in democracy has always been central, and I, we have a very strong history in our party. We are the party who introduced the, the universal suffrage, the right for women to vote, etc. We have always been ideologically on, on, on the ball of, of democracy. And it's not a coincidence that it is the liberal parties that can gather two quite impressive panels on democracy promotion because it's, it is at the heart of liberalism to, to fight for democracy. It's more difficult sometimes for conservatives to find a a uh, reasonable partner to work with. It's certainly hard for, for socialists to find a reasonable part, uh, partner to work with because these ideologies don't put democracy at the forefront and, and as liber liberals, we do that. Um, the, the history of, of the political foundations in, in Sweden is, of course, if, is uh, the, the fall of the Iron Curtain in, in, in Poland. Actually, the, 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 the whole global interest in democracy promotion only came uh, after, after the fall of the Ber Berlin Wall. Uh, we used to say, uh, ironically, that the, 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 introduce, the introduction of democracy in many countries led to democracy assistance. It's yet to be proven that democracy assistance actually leads to democracy. But I, I do think that uh, important things have been done. Uh, when the, the Iron Curtain fall, you had this new countries uh, trying to become democratic, and they have many needs. They need a, a, a justice system, they need the free media, they need all the different elements of, of democracy. But they also need political movements that can, that can articulate uh, the, the will of the people, that can introduce coherent policies and who can run the country. Um, we see, as I mean, Paul made this case very strongly in his presentation, I'm just going to go over it quickly. Uh, you need the political, po you, you can't think of democratic policies, uh, politics without political parties. The political parties are the ones who actually are supposed to uh, have their roots in society. And when you have an anti-capitalist movement sitting on a square somewhere for, for weeks, you really wonder what is the anti-capitalist parties doing? Because why are they not absorbing these people to work for their political agenda and bringing it into the decision-making bodies of the democratic state? I think that's a very, very relevant uh, question. Uh, but, but nonetheless, this is one of the arguments why you need political parties. Um, secondly, uh, political parties are the ones actually setting the agenda for change. They, they are really telling us what are, are the, 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 the challenges that society has to deal with right now. Because there are always hundreds of challenges, but politics deal with one or two challenges at a time. And the political parties are, are really crucial in this. The political parties provide the coherent answers to, to the questions. I mean, in, in the whole field of development cooperation, which is anti-poverty, anti-poverty, uh, anti-poverty, there is not uh, an ideological or coherent strategy because you can see this politically in completely different ways. You can see uh, uh, fighting poverty as redistribution or you can see fighting poverty as economic growth. And you need the political parties are, are actually vehicles 
that articulate these different worldviews and put them to the citizens and the citizens are then allowed to decide what do we believe is the answers to the problems that we face in our society. Again, the political parties play a crucial role. <coughs> the political parties are the ones developing the politicians and they are the ones putting forward the candidates. When you go to election, you vote to some, for somebody who's already been elected by its own political party. So this is another argument why the political parties have to be strong and democratic so that they can bring up, and functional, so that they can bring up the best possible uh, political leaders. And also, and this relates, I mean, this is a general thing, but in particular when it comes to, to, develop, to, to huge chunks of development cooperation and support to, to poor countries, Often a deal is made between the government of that country, that is often not that democratic, and, and the foreign donors. Um, but you need somebody in society to actually check what, 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 what are these people doing with this money. So you need a strong opposition in parliament that can go through the national budget, can go through the, the aid budget, and make sure that the priorities articulated in the, uh, in the aid programs are the same priorities that the people have in the country. So that's yet another argument, even if you know, your, your basic uh, view on development cooperation is fighting poverty, nonetheless there has to be a political control of this fight uh, of poverty and that requires strong political parties in opposition in parliament. So these are some of the key arguments uh, why we have to support political parties. And, 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 the, the, uh, and the bottom line, the thing is that until you can work on, on the justice system, you can work on the media, you can work with, with NGOs, you can work with a lot of things that are good for democracy, but until you have a democratic leadership in the country really wanting to do reform, there will be no democracy. We see this clearly, for instance, in a country like Moldova, where for years the, the Communist Party dragged on to power and we had all sorts of European aid program and every reform was so slow and painstaking and nothing happened. They changed government in one, uh, one year ago, more or less, one and a half. And since then the reforms have come one by one because it's a democratic leadership. When you have Democrats in power, the road to democracy is much faster. <coughs> I, I think this is what what we have learned. I mean, now I'm talking about the, the, the Swedish government policy to, to democratization. We have the current government calls its uh, democracy promotion policy freedom from uh, oppression, and it's exactly based on that principle that actually promoting democracy is taking power away from somebody and making sure that somebody else who's legitimate can 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 exercise public power. <clears throat> so this is guiding our work and it's very positive for us political foundations because we have had a very small part of the Swedish democracy uh, promotion uh, budget uh, before, but now, now there is uh, uh, an increasing interest in the work that we do, N not the least because of, of the changes that happened in, in, in North Africa where people realize that we have all now all these different political players in, in these countries and nobody knows them. And it's because we haven't had those kinds of relationships uh, developed. So these relationships should be developed uh, very strongly with unfree countries. <coughs> um, the, the whole uh, group of political party foundations in, in Sweden gets an annual uh, uh, grant from the government of 8.5 million euros, which is very small in comparison to the whole aid budget, but it, it's, it's, it's good money for us. Uh, it's distributed in accordance with the number of seats uh, we have in parliament. So the Liberal Party has 7% uh, seven, <coughs> seven of the vote, so we get 7% uh, of the money. <coughs> Most of the money is distributed in according to size. We are also competing with the other foundations uh, for, for, for a certain amount of projects. Uh, the money that we get directly to us, we, can, we, are, we, are, we are supposed to spend on sister parties, on parties who are like ourselves. Uh, the idea is uh, that uh, only we only a liberal can teach a liberal how to be a liberal. I mean, I can teach a social democrat uh, how to be a liberal because then I would advise him to, to immediately change his uh, ideology. Um, <clears throat> so, and, and it's, it's considered fair because, I mean, it's a bit strange. Um, it's considered fair 
because it's a reflection of what the, the, the ideologies of the Swedish voters. So, and that's why it's 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 a, it's a reasonable thing. You would think that the government would say we will only we have a right center right government. We will only support those policies, but that would then be put under serious question. These are the six uh, other foundations uh, operating in Sweden. Um, the biggest one is the Olaf Palme International Center, belonging to the Social Democrats. Uh, the, the top one to the to the right uh, or to your left is uh, the second largest, belonging to the Conservative parties, and then there are fairly small foundations. Uh, the rest of them we meet uh, every month and discuss uh, common issues, and we actually try to lobby together uh, to get more more grants uh, for this kind of work. Also, in some situations, and uh, as I will show you <coughs> later, we actually work together because in some uh, situations it doesn't ma it, it's not, it doesn't <coughs> it doesn't seem reasonable to just go and promote liberalism in a, in a place like Belarus, where actually you have to join all the political forces for a democratic change. The same in Cuba, the same in any country that's very unfree. <coughs> Uh, when it comes to Silk, my own organization, we are seven people. Um, we have a turno turnover of 1.6 million euros, uh, so which allows us to do a lot of good work. Um, we are, because of the history of this support scheme, we have the, the, the bulk of our work in, in Eastern Europe. Uh, we have worked with Cuba for a long time, and now we are gradually trying to move our funds uh, to the Middle East. Uh, the, what has happened in the Arab Spring is as historic as the fall of the Iron Curtain, uh, of course, as a player or uh, as an actor in democracy promotion. This is where we have to be at the moment. <coughs> Here's a list of our countries. Uh, the sister support scheme, you see, that's where we have uh, political parties that we work with directly. And we have, we also, because we've been working at this for 20 years, we can also go to the Swedish International Development Agency and ask for, I mean, just as, as any organization can, we, we can ask for, for special grants to promote democracy in this and that country. Um, in Russia, for instance, we spend, I think, uh, 300,000 euros a year. Belarus, 400,000 euros a year. Cuba, 450,000 uh, euros a year. So it's substantial uh, programs that we're operating. We are also, as I say, they're moving into to regional North Africa. Now I'm going to go through, because it, maybe it's, it's very abstract, so I'm going to go through the different projects just for you to get a grasp of what we're actually doing. <coughs> In Russia, we do two things. We work with the Yabloko party, which is a, the a liberal party. Um, they are also allowing into the party because it's very hard to register these days uh, Greens and, and Social Democrats into the same electoral platform. Uh, we do, um, we train the youth movements, we help them develop their, their party newspaper, we help them develop the, the party website, um, those kinds of activities. We work in Northwest Russia, so we focus on the St. Petersburg uh, branch. <coughs> uh, but we also have this bigger grant from the Swedish International Development Agency, uh, where we work with, uh, with the NGOs uh, and the, the, the young liberals. Um, we do campaign training, uh, organization development training, and, and so on. And we do it together, and we think this is a really, this, it's, um, there's a, it's a special point in doing that, in working with the NGOs and the political parties together. Uh, the NGOs can be environmentalists, uh, human rights, uh, all those sorts of things that young people care about. And actually, it's important to lower the thresholds between representative politics and NGO politics, because if you want a democratic change, you have to enter the political process. Uh, we don't, we can't, as, as democracy promoters, we cannot play in to the, to the, reg to the suspicion or to the thought or the view that politics is something dirty and that political parties are only in it for themselves. Political parties is the way to get people's representation and we have to also talk to, to people who want to change society, come in to the political party. That's the way we will get into a, a decision-making position where we can actually make the changes that we want to, sh want to make. <coughs> Uh, we're also working with um, with uh, uh, an election watchdog in in Moscow, and uh, 
we gave them uh, media training and, uh, and uh, internet social media training. Um, just uh, two days ago, uh, there was um, the, the, one of the Putin-controlled TV channels kicked up the door of the Golos office with a camera and started asking them, where do you get your money from and uh, what, why, are you, why are you trying to bring down the state, etc. And the guy who's been trained by us just said two things all over and over again <coughs> for, for 20 minutes. And he filmed the reporter. So he said, um, you, you, your, uh, your channel is ideological. Come to the press conference after the elections. Whatever question he was, uh, he was asked, he said these two things. And that's what you learn in media training. You stay on your message. Now, after that, he put up th this little video clip on YouTube, and after 24 hours, it had uh, 160,000 views. And probably I haven't checked now, but you know, it's, it's exploding. And this is really a nice thing for us, where you can see that the, the training that we put in is actually leading to, 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 to results. It's been great. In Belarus, as I said, we, we work uh, with the whole opposition. Uh, so on, on the Swedish side, we have uh, uh, three other uh, foundations working with us. It's the other liberal foundation, the Social Democrats and the Greens, and the Christian Democrats are also joining our, our setup now because we need to work with all of them. If they are going to kick uh, Lukashenko out, they have to be united. Uh, we didn't invite them saying, we want to unite you, because they would say, who are you to unite us? So that's not how it works. You always have to approach these things with, with humility. So we said, okay, let's talk about some common project. Let's talk about uh, training your young people. Let's talk about training the, the women's wings to bring more women into politics. Let's talk about uh, election observation. Let's talk about social media. And then they said, okay, let's talk about it and let's do something. And, and we designed the project together. <coughs> now, we've been doing this for, for three, four years now. And of course, the result is both that we have trained a lot of people, and this is very important, but also that the parties are much more used to working together now. Um, so now we are introducing, okay, let's talk, maybe we can have a, a policy development project when we talk about what could, what's the opposition policy uh, on health, what's the opposition uh, policy on the, uh, the the, the education system, because these, when you go and you try to, to, to take power in the country, this is what the citizens want to hear about. The citizens don't want to hear about political rights. They can't eat political rights. It's very important for the parties, and as, as the opposition parties under pressure, you, all, you, you, you what's important to you is your political rights, but what's important to the voter is his daily life. So this is really important to move from the political rights to the real policies. Um, in Cuba, it's very difficult to work, very difficult. Uh, we can't, in most countries that we work, even Belarus, we write a contract with a, when we have sister party work, we write a contract with a partner, they spend the money and they report to us. We, 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 uh, we developed the, the project ideas together, I mean, it's mainly them, but also we have to make sure that it fits with what's allowed for us to support. And, and report back to us. It doesn't work in Cuba. There's too much pressure from the government. The secret police can kick up your door at, at any point and, and take your papers and so on. It hasn't worked. So we, we, what's really important now is just keeping the opposition alive. <coughs> uh, we do this in, in three different ways. We print a newspaper. Uh, actually, we print it in El Salvador. The, we, the, the articles are written in Cuba. They're sent to uh, Stockholm, where we have Cubans in exile putting together a new newspaper, we print it in El Salvador, and we bring it back into the country in different ways. This is a really important platform for, for fr free-minded Cubans to exchange views. And, and when I was in, in Cuba now, almost two years ago, I went around to see the different op opposition figures. And one of them said, oh, I'm really angry with this guy because of what he wrote in the paper. And then I knew, okay, this paper is relevant. If they, they can have a, a discourse, a dialogue through this paper, then it's a worthwhile eff effort. Uh, lots of opposition f figures have independent libraries in their homes. This is, it's very small. It's a hundred in, in the whole country. Each library is maybe two bookshelves. <coughs> Nonetheless, there isn't much more in terms of free organization. So we, 
make sure to bring them uh, materials, uh, equipment and so on, movie equipment so they can show films and so on. We, we bring physically send people there and, and give them the stuff. Uh, and thirdly, which is also important, we make sure to have political exchange. So we send European politicians to meet with the Cuban opposition politicians. This is both strengthening the position of, of, the, of the Cubans um, in, in opposition because the government knows that there will be a reaction if they're harassed. So that's important. It's also important for, for the individual to get exchange from, from, from somebody else and more support. Sometimes if you're up against the whole system, you think sometimes you're crazy. So you need people to come and tell you, know, actually you're the norm, normal one and, and it's your government who's crazy. So that kind of moral support is very important. Also, uh, it's very important when we design a European policy towards Cuba that it's based on what the Cuban opposition is thinking and what's good for the Cuban opposition. Uh, and we can't do that unless we talk to them. <coughs> so that has also been, been crucial. And, uh, in 2010, uh, for instance, uh, Guillermo Farinas got the, 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 the Freedom Prize of the European Parliament, and that's really a result of all the, the people that have gone to Cuba, met him, then come back, then lobby the European Parliament, and so on. So it's, it's important also in terms of putting pressure on the regime. <coughs> Uh, in the Ukraine, we work with a small uh, party, uh, liberal party, uh, in eastern Ukraine. Uh, as liberals, or at least our foundations, we are not looking to pick a winner. We are looking for people who have the right principles, and, and we support them. <coughs> so this is a, a good group of people. They, what they do a lot of is uh, human rights education. They talk to, to young people about human rights, and then when people get interested, you know, they get invited to the party. So that's the kind of program that they're running. The party is, uh, has mainly been active on the local level. They had, before the last local elections, 150 deputies. And because now Ukraine is going really the wrong way, they lost all their seats because of cheating and, and harassment, and they are now regrouping to see what they can do. They're trying to join the, the ELDR, the European Liberal Party, and I think that would be a good step that should be supported. <coughs> the, with, with the Ukrainians, we've been supporting them for 10 years, and now talking about best and, and worst practices. There is, uh, and party financing, there is a, a danger, and I can see it in my own country, when you put up a strong financing scheme for the party. In, in Sweden we have public financing. In the case of this party, they get lots of their financing from us. Then your priority is not reaching out to your members for, for money and, and, and not to, to, develop, to, to develop the membership. And I think this is an important lesson. And in the last two years, we've started to talk to this party. Guys, you really, really have to ri raise your own money because that's how you get sustainable. You can't get sustainable with silk money. You know, now the, the Middle East opens up, we are going there, and it's <coughs> we simply don't have uh, as much funds as we used to have. So a strong funding strategy is, is necessary. Um, <coughs> Moldova, we worked with the Liberal Party for, for many years. Uh, they fell out of parliament, uh, the party was uh, dissolved and merged with a different party. We had to stop, and it's, it's, a, sad, uh, it's a sad story. Um, what we can console ourselves with is that, okay, at least they have trained a lot of people, we have developed a lot of leaders, who knows where they will resurface later. Sometimes they come up in good places, sometimes in very bad places. The current uh, president of Hungary, Viktor Orban, has been trained by Silk uh, 20 years ago, and the training didn't really stick, uh, I must say. In Serbia, uh, we work with the LDP, we have worked with them for 20 years, with a gr group of young kids coming out of Otpor, the anti-Milosevic uh, <coughs> movement, then trans transforming themselves into a small party, this small party joining a bigger party, carrying with them the ideolo ideology all the way. And now <coughs> this party is a very important force in, in Serbian politics. They are the only party who say that, that Kosovo has been lost. They don't say it should be lost, but uh, we have to recognize the fast, uh, fact that it has been lost. It's the only party uh, who, will, who is advocating the rights of homosexuals to, to have a pride parade. And that's why you see on one of the pictures they put uh, lipstick on the party leader. But they really stand up for, for the liberal values. Now, this party now has 70,000 members, 
uh, they, of which 30,000 people are young. So I'm, I'm suggesting to them that actually you, you need a support program for us now, because we are, we are 20,000 members and most of them are very old, I would say. <coughs> I'm among the young ones and I'm 40. Um, Bosnia, it's a, it was a similar story like Serbia. We started working with young people, they, they, they got into a party, they started controlling the ideology of the party, it was very liberal, but at some crucial points they didn't make it in the electoral processes, and then the party will lose its, its energy. <coughs> and now the party is weak uh, in, uh, in the last year, they failed to produce economic report to us, and when the administration of a party is not working, then we can't work with them. But it's all the the, if the administration is not working, it's a sign that the whole party is not working. If you're dealing directly with a party leader on some administrative issues, you know that there is not much structure below, b below the party leader. I see that I've been going for 24 minutes, so I'll, <laughs> I'll speed up even more. <coughs> we work in Singapore. Again, it's a story like, uh, like in Russia. Uh, what we're funding is for the party to, to organize events together with, for instance, anti-death penalty activists, gay rights uh, activists, uh, anti-caning uh, human rights groups, etc. For them to see that the party is not something strange or, or dangerous, to lower the threshold between act general activism and political activism. We think this is very important. It's working quite well. This party has, uh, in the elect last elections, around 30% of the vote. The electoral system of, of Singapore is, is not very fair, so they don't have a single seat in the parliament, but 30% of Singaporeans vote for them. <coughs> we have a, a history of, of working in some places in Africa, um, in Somaliland, which is a part of Somalia. They have their own parliament. Uh, all the women who are in that parliament have been trained by us at some point. We have had to abandon the work there because of the administrative problems. For us, we want to, to do as much work as possible, and if we have to make 10 phone calls to, to get a report, then it's, it's a waste of, of, of our money and it's a waste of our time. So we are facing out those kinds of projects. People, the people we work with have to be qualified enough uh, to to, uh, to actually handle the resources. Otherwise, okay, we can invite them to conferences, exchanges, etc. But if we ha if we're going to have a partnership, it has to be a strong enough partner. Zimbabwe has to be been has been the same thing. I'm going to go fast now. <coughs> we also have, and this is uh, for for our. What's really crucial for us is the relationship to our own party, because most of the trainers. Uh, and speakers that we get uh, to, to work with parties in other countries, they do it for free. And moreover, it's people that you can't buy on the consultancy market because they're real-life politicians who are currently dealing with real-life challenges. And when you have somebody who's uh, the mayor of a small town from your party meeting somebody who's aspiring to the mayor, be the mayor of a small town somewhere else, they find really, really a lot of things to talk about. So it's not only the presentation that he's giving in a seminar, it's also you, they will go from, from early morning to latest night really talking about politics. And it's, it's really felt by everybody involved as something very valuable and, and that really provides a, a lot of mutual learning. <coughs> so if I would get to give some good advice to, to other political uh, foundations, you have to combine the, the, the real political skills. You have to have people who are involved in politics, but you also need a development cooperation uh, background in your team, because development cooperation has a certain logic that you have to understand. And that, in the 20 years of history, uh, I would say that our foundations were quite clumsy in the beginning because we didn't understand actually how this development cooperation business works. Now, we, we, we are, some of the foundations have gone too far to the other way, so they become very technical and, and they don't want to deal with the party. party. Uh, and that's not good either. The, 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 it becomes very strong when you have the, the good foundation combined with the political experience. <coughs> you have to in this business, because you, you're working with donor money, you have to not only, as political foundations, of course, it's very easy to, uh, for us to go to the minister and, and try to put pressure on the civil servants, but that will always uh, backfire, so you have to, to really deal well with the public administration in your country. 
it's very important, as you've heard me make the case, it's very important to talk about political parties because they're often elected people say it's dirty even here people say that politics is not working anymore no that's not true politics is working uh, and and if we believe in democracy we have to believe that we also have to talk about political parties uh, you should it's important to bring the the, the parties into the international families uh, the socialist international in the case of social democrats so that they can exchange naturally with other people in the case of us of course it's a liberal international and, and ELDR um, as I said before, you have to make sure that the partners are competent because otherwise you set yourself up for a lot of tedious work trying to clean up bad projects. So if people are not delivering, sorry guys, um, you know, come back when, when you have your house in order. I think a good advice for all of us is to try to get more funding for this kind of work because I think we have a very good case. I think that we have actually do have some success stories. We do have very rational arguments why this is important and I think that we should always advocate this kind of work. Uh, and lastly, if I have one more point, try to bring the, the young people uh, of your political party, the young people into this work because I have never seen more qualified young people than I've seen in the political parties. These are young kids. When I was a young kid, actually I wasn't a party member, I was playing in a band and I wasn't caring about politics. But these guys have the same interests that I had in playing the bass they have in politics and they are really, really qualified. They will work for 24 hours without stopping and, and they will do great things. And 20 years later, you will see them sitting in the European Parliament or in the government somewhere and where they can and based on the experience that they're having in this kind of work, they can actually make uh, the, the world a better place. So, thank you.